Music fades down. Hello, everybody. This is Life After Scientology, and I'm Ron Miscavige. And that was the intro music. Listen, I'm so close to the screen. I'm, I'm broadcasting from home right now. I can't play my horn. So maybe in the future, I can work it out so I can get my horn in there. But anyway, that was the intro music. And um, we have a special show for you today, as always. Uh, before I get started, though, please, if you haven't subscribed to this program, please do so and share it with as many people as you can. And if you care to, you can become a patron, which I would appreciate very much. As you know, we don't have a sponsor, so I depend on uh, your kind help on this. So uh, that's the commercials out of the way now. We have a very enlightening show today, as always. And of course, we have one of your favorite guests of all time, and that is Karen De La Courier. So good morning, Karen. Actually, it's Hello. afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So listen, welcome to the show. And uh, boy, I'll tell you, we got some doozies to take up today. And um, I don't know. What do you want to start with? I, I think we ought to get into a little bit something about the coronavirus in the church, how they're treating it. What do you think? You know, it's a nice, warm, sunny day in California. It's one of those California sunshine days. But what is on the mind of people is coronavirus. I yeah. mean, I've never seen the media bombard this topic so much. Yeah. And I wanted to check with you, Ron, as we are both veterans of 40 years and all of that. I wanted to check with you what your thoughts are if they had some people in sick bay when they remove someone who has a temperature what if first of all what do you think the chances are it seems that the statistics of coronavirus are mostly institutional nursing homes retirement homes prisons right, right. Uh, where people are condensed and compacted where right. people live together, eat together, and stuff. And the Sea Org is very much designed to lend itself to spreading of infection. What are your thoughts on that? Well, my thoughts are, if anybody ever got it, our chances of hearing about it are, mm -hmm. I would say, in the realm of zero to none. Somewhere in that area, you know, zero, one, I don't know, you know. Uh, it's just, it, n n nothing. We, we'd never hear about it unless somebody died. God forbid, and I don't wish death on anybody. Uh, I love life, and everybody loves to live. It's the strongest desire you have is to continue to live. But uh, with the conditions that they have people staying together on their, in the tight quarters, I have concern about these poor people because, look, a lot of them got in the Sea Org with false promises as they're going to work in Hollywood or they're going to, especially the foreigners, you're going to come to the United States and you're going to enjoy life over there and it's going to be wonderful. And it, nothing could be further from the truth. So you have these poor souls that are now compacted together like tuna fish in a sardine can. And uh, it, it's, it's a dangerous situation as far as I'm concerned. I, I don't think we'd ever hear about it though, unless somebody died. The, po the way the bunk beds are, when there are 10 men in a room stacked up like sardines, there's absolutely no way to yeah. social distance sleeping conditions. They can't suddenly get more rooms and nope. keep people in separate rooms. So the design and the way people eat in the dining rooms and stuff is very condensed and compressed. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I, I remember uh, when I worked at the International Base, which I did for 26 and a half years, there was a space over there uh, a little bit off the main traffic of the base. And it was a house. And in the basement, they had men's uh, quarters, birthing. And I went in there looking for somebody one time, and it was a single light bulb hanging from the ceiling. And it looked like I walked into like... Oliver oh. Twist, no, like Oliver Twist's home back in 
whenever that was written. And it was dark, and I saw the bunks, and there were three high. It'd be one, two, and three. And I thought to myself, God Almighty, these people are goddamn living here. It's just, it, it's, it's pitiful, honestly. Yeah. So, uh, the, here's the thing. Here's the thing, Ron. Now, discuss this with me. There seems to be incredible, right across the boards, there's always a fixation on the material aspect, like buy more, buy more real estate, buy more real yeah. estate is far more important than caring for the welfare of the staff member. Oh, that's first, true. first buy real, real estate is and good, exquisite, exquisite entrances, marble pillars for events, all of this. The decoration of the event, the, the golden pillars, are more important than the sleep deprivation of the humans that have to make the sets. So the physical universe to impress and be impinging has always been more important than the human soul. Do you agree with that? Not only do I agree with it, let's take this into consideration. You're talking about material objects. Yes, material the objects. T the TRs of Dave's special force, his police force, has to be like hard chrome steel. Yeah. What the hell is this? Yeah. What does that have to do with how you approach life and approach another person to deal with them? In other words, no compassion, like a piece of steel. I, I, I get no relief from looking at a piece of steel and I, I you know, yet they want to have, well, when I say TRs, that's short for training routines and that, that's a presence. extra. The way yeah, it, it, your mood, your presence should the, be. The, the, the presence of a person, how they approach another person in communication, their demeanor, you know, their facial expression. And if it's going to be compared to chrome steel, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> okay, it carries further. I saw an article on Tony Ortega where the, he had some data from the orgs where it said the most important thing is protect the org. Yes. You remember that? Yes. Yeah, yes. that was on Tony Ortega. Yes. So that goes right along with your point about the material objects being more important than the people. See, you, what, is, what is the technique, though, internally, is use force with overwhelm yeah. to dominate the point you're trying to make. Again, this is not in any way feeling that there could be a win-win between a junior and a senior or two people in an adverse position. Yeah. The only way, the only technique in Scientology is to slam, bam, overwhelm, scream, yell, dominate, introvert the person into being a dot. Yeah, that is absolutely true, Karen. And to think that you have a state of mind to think that's going to work, that that type of treatment will then take a person to think, oh boy, look how I'm being treated. Well, I want to be a good boy and I'm going to do everything they tell me and I'm going to be real good and I'm going to do the right things all the time. It, uh, I'll tell you what it brings about. I'll tell you what it brings about. You see me, I see you. We've left the church and we're talking about them. That's what that brings about. Mm -hmm. And even if a person doesn't do this, after a while, a lot of them get to the point where they say, I can't live this way anymore. And they, they leave. They might not ever do something like we're doing. But that type of attitude of treating a person like dirt, spitting in their face, just yelling at them that they, they can't tolerate the force, that brings about no good at all. It's ne it never has, okay? So it's not like this is something new that, oh, well, I guess it won't work this time. No, it's never worked. Yeah. 
it it uh, the <laughs> I was just thinking the only way we'll find out find out if coronavirus is in fact spreading inside with staff is if somebody flees. Yeah, that's we need a leak. We need a leak. Yeah. Um, a few years ago, hundreds of people caught some. I wish I could. I wish I should have done my homework here. The hundreds of people in Los Angeles were put into sick areas and isolation. They all caught this thing, but it was never reported to CDC, the Disease Control Center, government. Yeah. It never, never reported. But hundreds caught it because the CO is designed for very close proximity. And I was just thinking, oh boy, if somebody fled, yeah, if somebody fled and gave a leak. Well, back to this, back to this very bizarre thing. There is only one technique in Scientology to handle everything, and that is totally dominate and put the fear of God into someone. But I'll tell you what's strange about that. It's almost psychiatric. It's what? It's almost psychiatric. The technique yeah. of punishing, uh, you know, punishing someone, strapping them down uh, when a patient has become very obstreperous and is out of control. What they punish by zapping them with injections and immobilizing them. Yeah. Strapping them down. Now, the person is completely immobilized. In Scientology, the screaming and yelling and uh, shouting and threatening, there's a lot of threat. The, the, the RPF hangs over you like a constant threat. Yeah. You don't toe the line and you're going, the punishments are going to escalate that is strange for a religion don't you think <laughs> well <laughs> a church come on let's not even talk about that that's not a religion at all there's no compassion there's no thinking that there's a higher power or a deity in other words a god like any religion at least you have some recourse to think well some some well actually i shouldn't say you have some recourse and some of them the god they imagine is a all-powerful punishing god but mostly when you think of a higher force of a god you think of some something that has compassion you see what i'm saying yeah like there'd be well as an example in the catholic church you have a chance to go and confess your sins to a priest and most priests are not um well, I, I shouldn't say that most, but there there was one in my hometown, and I brought this up many times in the past. You told him your sins, and all he would say is, oh, okay, you're forgiven, and here's your, your penalty. You say all these prayers, and you walked out, and you felt, hey, I wiped my soul clean for the week. I'm going to try to be a better boy. That that would be the effect of that, because I always thought, after I was forgiven, I'm going to try not to do those things. I'm going to try to be a better kid. So... That comes about by that compassion of saying, okay, you're forgiven. There is no forgiveness in the church, in the church of Scientology. No None. No. There's also no mistakes or errors. There are only crimes. <laughs> That's true. We've said this before. It's always interpreted that you very maliciously, from your evil intentions, committed that error yeah. and it, they don't define it as an error they define it as a crime because you're stopping or blocking by that i remember way back even uh they used to put out bulletins on a mimeograph machine it's kind of primitive yeah and, and the mimeographer snipped off the last line of every single issue oh, oh this was completely absolutely deemed to be 
a malicious act, cutting off a sentence of Hubbard's words by mimeographing it with this kind. This was not an error. This was not a mimeograph snafu, a mistake. This was criminal, right? The other thing that's bizarre and strange when looking at oddities is how your years and years of service doesn't count for anything. No. No, it doesn't. I, I know no that, mm -hmm. Go ahead. Listen, there's, remember Jeff Hawkins? Yeah. What, he was about 35 years in the SEA organization? Yeah. Uh, he was what they call fitness board. It's a board of people that decide whether you're qualified to stay in the SEA or to stay in the SEA or, or not stay in. And they fitness board it. In other words, decided he didn't qualify to be in the Sea Org. His severance pay, I think, was five hundred dollars. I think he asked to leave. I think he, you know, the threshold you talked about. Uh, one enough is enough. One hits yeah. a point where this is not what you signed up for. Okay, then I, I could be mistaken yes. about that. But yes. when he got out, those yes. thirty-five years counted for five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars for for severance pay. Now. Talking about an old veteran like that, I want to talk about Jeannie Sonnenfield. She used to be Jeannie Franks, married oh. to Bill Franks. Oh, yeah. You know, she was also Jens Bogvard's wife. Now, she got recalled from Cincinnati, and she was put on very heavy mess labor for here in Los Angeles with her son. <laughs> She brought her son in as staff, and both her and her son were sent to what we call the decks. And Cincinnati all recently has been told that she has been retired. That's the word, retired. That means really? She, uh -huh, she's been retired. That's the word at Cincinnati Org. Now, Jeannie had her, her flaws and, you know, but... She's been in 45 years, and her punishment, uh, at one point, Jeannie was the commanding officer of 